Hello everyone, welcome to a very special episode of Is It Worth It? And tonight, I review for you The Evil Within, a first-person survival horror game that is supposed to be better than Resident Evil. Is it? Well, I don't know, we'll find out. Also, at the end of the review, we finally find out who wins the Tomb Raider contest raffle and gets to receive this beautiful blanket with none other than Lara Croft herself on it. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoy my first Rocks and Review Rants, first time ever, Halloween special. <laughs> The Evil Within was directed by Shinji Mikami, the original director of the Resident Evil game, so it has a quite a reputation to follow, at least that's what the media made it out to be, but does it dethrone the original classic and live up to the hype? Well here's my opinion. The Evil Within is a third person horror survivor game, it's also a single player experience. You play as Sebastian Gastianos, <laughs> wow that's a name you'll easily forget. So they call him Seb for short. Him and his colleagues, a woman named Julie and his partner Joe, get called into a hospital where a mass murder has just taken place. Once you are there, you're introduced to what the game is going for, a whole lot of hardcore gore and violence. Soon after the investigation begins, you find out that there is more to this place than meets the eye, as some supernatural force take over and begins messing with Seb's mind. Now I want to point something out. I know people who are interested in this game, and they have asked me if the supernatural elements of this game come from a demonology worship, or are they created by human hands? I was trying to figure that out myself throughout the campaign because the creature in this game are pretty nightmarish and horrific. Without giving away spoilers, I can share that no, it doesn't come from demonology worship. If you guys are judging and asking, well then why would anyone who is afraid of that would want to play a game of this nature? Well, because we're all different and believe in different things. And I also have you know that I have my own reasons, but it's no different like people not wanting to own a Ouija board in their home, or like me, who I choose not to own the movie The Exorcist in my movie so collection. And if that sounds silly to you and are asking why, well quite simply, I just don't want to invite that sort of thing into my home, especially when I sleep. Having this said, there are many scary moments in the game, and like I said earlier, very nightmarish and gruesome encounters. The environments in certain sections transform into other locations during cutscenes, so you never feel safe or get too complacent with your surroundings when the environment shifts to another location. The creatures, or as they are called, the haunted, are pretty much in every chapter of the game, and they range from basic human form with glowing eyes to heavily mutated creatures, resemblance of John Carpenter's horror classic, The Thing. There are plenty of jump scares for everyone to scream at, and very scary settings to explore to your satisfaction, although some places give you more areas to explore than others. The gameplay feels like classic Resident Evil. The beginning always feels light with the scares, but the worse it gets the further you go down the rabbit hole. For reasons I can't explain, there is a central station where you constantly return to a dilapidated hospital which acts as your control center for collecting newspaper clippings. Also, you can unlock lockers for surprise loot and put together a very big puzzle. It is unexplained why you are the only oh, patient at this hospital, but there is a very sexy is nurse named Tatiana, right? and she is the head nurse at the hospital. The nurse reminds me so much of the nurse from Silent Hill 2 that I couldn't help but to think of the crush I used to have on her as I saw her walk away. At this hospital, there is also an electrocution chair that you must sit at in order to access your perks and upgrades, and you must shock yourself to activate those upgrades. Yep, you must electrocute yourself to activate your new abilities, given that you have the right amount of goo. Yes, you must collect plenty of green slime or stuff in jars to accumulate the right amount of vitamins, I guess, to be able to withstand the higher shocks in the chair. There are plenty of weapons in the game, but as you might imagine, very little ammo, so I'd advise you to be careful of wasting your ammo, and it can be done because this game does have something no other has before, and that's the stealth feature. You can now slowly sneak up on a your size creature and suddenly take them down, and of course you also can use noisemakers to attract or distract enemies. You can also hide underneath beds and in closets. They also have this thing about burning the dead with matches to keep them from coming back. 
You have access to a pistol, shotgun, and sniper, but the most unique weapon is the crossbow called the Agony because you can create different types of elemental arrows for it, like shock, freeze, and explosives to name a few. You create items by collecting parts either by finding them or breaking down traps. There isn't much of collectibles in the game except for uh, newspaper clippings, audio recordings, and police notes. Medkits are also found throughout the campaign. After beating the game, there is New Game Plus, but you also unlock other things too, like the machine gun and rocket launcher, even uh, character models to view. Also, everything in the game gets doubled, like the goo you need to get upgrades. Visually, the game looks good. It's supposed to have that 70s style grainy look to it, although you can control this grain through the options menu. Also, the screen is a letterbox format, which puts a black bar at the top and one at the bottom. It's a sort of a strange aspect ratio that they chose. This game feels like Silent Hill meets Resident Evil. It has the Resident Evil style of gameplay and creature mutations mixed with Silent Hill's nightmarish moments that unite reality to the supernatural. The atmosphere is what counts in horror games and this game definitely has its own. You'll be going through all the regular settings of horror-like locations like old ghost towns, haunted mansions, scary hospitals, and even the other side. Those have day and night scenarios so you don't get burnt out on just the dark settings. The light and shadow work very well, however sometimes I felt like there were certain areas where it was completely too dark or heavy in fog that it was really difficult to see. Even with the lamp that you carry with you at all times, it was still difficult to see. And of course it attracts enemies if they see the light, so it was always best and I did have it. Sounds and soundtrack were okay. The Haunted sounded like dogs growling, so as soon as I made that distinction, they didn't sound so scary. Ambience always felt like it was generic, so it didn't really feel special. Unfortunately, not even the soundtrack was intense, but more annoying than scary at intense moments. I don't know, I guess it was just decent, I guess. So did this game live up to the hype and then some? I found this game very scary and fun, although some moments in the game felt a little forced, I did find myself being terrified of what I'd run into next. The dread of walking through claustrophobic hallways and settings continuously changing for something bad to happen always had me on my toes ready to sprint. Unfortunately, the game's characters don't really stand out. Unlike with Resident Evil where you remember Chris and Jill and you cared about keeping them alive, the scenarios in this game only had me wanting to see what would happen to Sebastian and death. And this made it more sad when I found out that one of my favorite actresses, Jennifer Carpenter, voiced for Julie Kidman. You guys might know her from the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose and Deborah Morgan from the Dexter series, and she had a very small part in the game. The control of the characters can be okay, but objects would sometimes block view when they would come between me and the camera. The aiming isn't too great either. This is something all the RE games have suffered from time to time, and this one does too, as I couldn't get a handle of the over-the-shoulder mechanic view. And finally, the story is too confusing and convoluted that I actually got lost in what was happening and was just playing the game for the sake of finishing it. My experience playing this game was fun and scary, but in the end, I felt very neutral about the story and most importantly, replayability. I don't think this game is for everybody, but if you want that scary experience and you want your money's worth, pick it up at $19.99. It's not worth the hype, but worth the scares. And just for fun, here are the opinions of other sites. Thank you so much you guys for supporting the channel. If you are new to the crew, hit the subscribe button and keep an eye out for upcoming reviews, let's plays, and rants. And I'm going to be adding even Twitch now to my repertoire, so we'll see how that goes. Hope you guys enjoy my company and please show it by hitting that like button and sharing the videos. My name is Rox, I want to say Happy Halloween and I'll catch up with you guys next time. What is it? I dropped my glasses back there. Fuck. Okay, as you know, the prize is this fleece blanket. It's very soft and very warm. It's a one of a kind and the winner gets to personalize it by adding their name or gamer tag. The blanket is courtesy from a and a Fleece Blanket, so if you guys want to check out uh, more of their stuff, I'll put a link to it on the video below.
Okay, before I pull the name, I just want to say thank you to the Tomb Raider fans for making this experience so very special. So, again, you guys, thank you so much for just simply watching. Alright, here we go. Okay, there you have it. Congratulations to the winner and to everyone else. Be safe and have a good night.